Scripture passage today is, comes from one verse out of John and then uh, a, a story of Jesus appearing to the disciples on their walk to Emmaus in, out of Luke. But if I were to write the story of resurrection and Easter and what happened immediately after Easter, it would go something like this. And then the day after Jesus was resurrected, all the Christians and all the disciples woke up and there weren't any more issues whatsoever in the world. And everyone was peaceful and everyone was kind to each other. And there was no more anxiety or worries or anything. Everything was just magically taken care of because of resurrection. The word according to Pastor David. Amen. <laughs> it didn't happen that way, did it? You know, we talk about it all the time, like on Easter morning when we're, we're doing Roll Tide and we're doing, he is risen, he is risen indeed. And we talk about it like this, 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 this magical thing that happens and that if you are a Christian, you should have this magical resurrection power in you and always be hopeful. That's kind of how we talk about it. But Easter starts in darkness. And Easter starts with the folks in an upper room locked in fear. Here's the scripture reading. John chapter 20, verse 19. When it was evening on that day, so there was darkness. The first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then another author out of Luke tells this story of Jesus appearing to the disciples. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. Jesus says, what things? He was a central character in, in all of this action. He's kind of like going along, oh, what are you all talking about? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, they said to Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Don't you know? And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped. We had only hoped. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the, woman, as the women had said. But they did not see him. Then he said to them, Jesus, Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself. In all the scriptures. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. I didn't include it as part of the reading of scripture today. But you all know what happened next. They, they finished their walk to Emmaus all together. And, and then they found a place to eat. And they broke bread together. And in the breaking of the bread. 
they recognized it was Jesus they were talking to the whole time. My agnostic friend several years ago that I love getting together with, he's other things besides just agnostic. We talk about religion all the time. And he said to me, y'all are building castles in the air. All this resurrection business, all this Easter business, your whole Easter thing and message of resurrection doesn't really work that well for those who live outside your bubble of protected evangelical and fundamental faith. It doesn't really work for the real world. Just you all that are hidden out and hide out in the walls of your sanctuary. His point was this. Those who enthusiastically endorse, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Come across as though it's pie in the sky. It comes across as unrealistic. It comes across like like we're building castles in the air. It would be great and everything, but it doesn't have anything to do with reality. Still, folks are living paycheck to paycheck after Easter. Those living over the loss of loved ones are still missing their loved ones after Easter. School shootings continue to take place after Easter. All these things and these events and these disaster responses that happen continue to take place after Easter. Y'all are building castles in the air. It's unrealistic, pie in the sky, out of touch, clueless people. You all are building castles in the air, he continued. It was that idea of building castles in the air actually goes all the way back to Augustine, who in the, in the fourth century, he, he had this Latin phrase he developed, subtracto fundamento in era adversari. If you know Latin better than I do, feel free to come on up. It translates, build on air with no foundation. The idiom in building castles in the air appears in the 1500s as well from a poem about romantic love and the idea that romantic love is so wonderful and everything, but in the realities of the harsh world, it just won't last. It just won't last. It won't survive the harsh realities of the world. Thou shalt make castles then in Spain, and dreams of joy all but in vain. The phrase building castles in Spain was well known at this time to mean something that is impossible to accomplish. The the idea in the 1500s is that, that, oh yeah, sure, why don't you go ahead and build castles in Spain? Everybody knew you couldn't build castles in Spain at that time. The Moors had taken over all of Spain. No one was building castles anymore. So the phrase became, yeah, that's just not going to happen in the realities of harsh things going on. By the 1500s, the reference to building castles in Spain was, was no longer understood, so it morphed into building castles in the air. The eye of a fanciful thing happening that doesn't have any basis or foundation under it. And I think that's how we in the church talk about resurrection sometimes. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Everybody smiles. It's all great. It's all going to work out. Woohoo! When in reality, people are having shoulder surgeries. People's spouses are dying. School shootings are happening. There's all these harsh realities around us that it seems like the church isn't really in touch with. Does it feel that way to you sometimes? It does to me. And I'm worried about my atheist and agnostic friends, and I wonder what they think. What I want them to know is this 
foundation that Jesus offers us. And this foundation that was, that was built under the idea of resurrection is what the disciples went through on their walk to Emmaus. They're talking about all these things, and they have all their facts and their figures wrong, and they're explaining uh, right, and they're explaining it to Jesus. It's like, don't you even know this happened, and this happened, and this happened? Are you the only ones in Jerusalem that has never heard? But what Jesus is seeing as he's walking alongside them and hearing the story about him is that they don't have a foundation. They don't, they don't have a, a perspective that's broad enough to see all the implications of what resurrection means. You see, resurrection isn't just some fanciful, magical thing that happens that allows us to magically put a smile on. No, this sermon series is all about realizing resurrection. It's kind of like the, the Easter sunrise service that we had. We sat there. We gathered first in the dark. It was dark out too. And as we sat there and worshiped together, it gradually got lighter and lighter and lighter. It's like we looked at it. It's like... Is it just me, or does it seem like it's getting lighter? It's like there's this dawning realization, dawn, the slow realization of, of light coming into the world. That's what resurrection's actually about. It's this broadening of our perspective. You remember the, in the movie um, Truman Show, one of my favorite movies ever. I, I'm sorry, I always quote Truman Show stuff to you. At one point, the director on this Truman Show, this fake movie set, says, cue the sun, and bam, it just shows up. It's daytime. That's not resurrection. It's not some magical, fanciful thing. It's something that each and every day we start to slowly realize what it really means. And so that's why Jesus talked to the disciples, and he said this. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. It's like go back to creation and how God first made us, uh, formed us in, the, in our womb and knitted us together in our womb. Go all the way back to then, this beloved creature that was created by God and then that was set in this garden location where everything was taken care of and yet decisions that we made separated us from God. And so there's this big division now that takes place between us and God and each other, and everybody's looking out for their own needs. And, and, and then God came into the world through Jesus. This is what we celebrate at, East, at Christmas time, isn't it? The incarnation, God became in human form so that we would more fully understand God. That same God who came to earth in human form was then crucified on a cross so that we would completely, so that separation between God and us and that separation between each other could be eradicated. And when we get the foundations of everything that's happening, when we're allowing this, this growing recognition and perspective to, to broaden within us, then we start to realize that, no, it's not just some fanciful thing. God showed up. And you and I are invited to show up as well. Into the hard and the difficult and the challenging places where it is chaotic out there. I'm so glad you all are here this morning because that's the message. You all are the message Christians who have this growing recognition of what resurrection means, they start to do what God did through Jesus. They, too, start just showing up. They start collecting diapers. They start contributing to food banks. They start getting their crayons together and turning it in so we have 300, 400, 500 pounds of crayons that we're sending off. By the way, those crayons are heavy. And we're going to need some of you all to step forward and pay for the postage for us to send them out. I, I just want to mention that, okay? <laughs> Christians that are touched by the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
start to imitate what Jesus did in the world. And what did Jesus do? He showed up. We don't have to all have it together theologically. We just need to also just show up. Do our little piece, our little part. And we walk alongside people in the same way Jesus start, just kind of starts walking alongside. Hey, what are you all talking about? We too just start showing up and start conversations. Hey, you've been going through a rough patch in your life, haven't you? Tell me about it. Oh, no, I don't, I don't have any answers. I, I really don't, but... But I want to walk alongside you as you're going through that rough patch. We start walking alongside people. We don't have easy answers, but we can walk alongside people. We can show up. We can do the same things that that Jesus did. Show up, walk alongside. And when we do that, we're walking into some very difficult, challenging places. We're, we're saying to our agnostic and atheistic friends who think we're just a bunch of hubbub around here. They're seeing us actually walk into difficult, challenging, locked up in fear, upper rooms. And we start appearing like Jesus did to the disciples. Until we all ascend, until we all go to heaven, we just show up and we do what needs to be done. Amen? Amen.